Well, hi guys, how are you doing? I first uh, think that I should start off by saying um, to my young people, I am no longer six years old. <laughs> and to all of you grown-ups, I know that you expected to see Rosa Parks. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you, I fall somewhere in the middle. But I can assure you that I am the real Ruby Bridges, which is what all my little ones call me. One of four six-year-old kids that was chosen to desegregate the public school systems in Louisiana in 1960 during the Civil Rights Movement. I remember being escorted by federal marshals into school every day, into an empty school building, I should say, and spending a whole year in an empty classroom with a single teacher that actually came from Boston to teach me, because teachers in New Orleans and Louisiana actually quit their jobs because they didn't want to teach black children. The worst part about first grade for me is the loneliness, not being able to um, go to recess or have lunch in the cafeteria. I spent that whole year searching and looking for the kids. The day that I entered school on my first day, all of the white parents rushed in and pulled out their kids. 500 kids left school that day because I was there. And they didn't come back. So I spent the whole year searching for those kids. The few kids that remained, the principal would hide them so that they would never see me and I would never see them. But thank God for the teacher that was there. She was my best friend and she taught me the lesson that Dr. King tried to teach each and every one of us. And that is we should never judge a person by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. She was white, she's still alive, and she's my very best friend. But I didn't come here today to talk about my story. I actually came to talk, I, I came here today to actually talk about all of our stories, history, and going against the grain. Something that I feel like I've been doing all my life, since childhood, six years old to be exact. You see, I am the little girl in the Norman Rockwell painting. The title, The Problem We All Live With. And that problem, I believe we are still living with it today. It being racism. And because of the way that I was introduced to that problem, I chose integration as my life's work because I wanted to do something to try and bridge the gap between our racial divide. And because that introduction happened for me at the ripe old age of six years old, I decided that I wanted to work with kids. So every day, all across the country, I speak to our kids in schools. Because let's face it, isn't that how we continue to spread racism from one generation to the next, is through our kids? Our kids know nothing about disliking someone because of the color of their skin. Each and every one of our babies, they come into the world with a clean heart, a fresh start in life. It is us, we as adults, who have kept racism alive. Believe it or not, it is us, we are responsible for the hatred that we see in this country today. So there, I've said it. I put it out there. So what do we do about it? And a better question I think might be, shouldn't we do something for the sake of our kids and our grandkids? 
Our children are self-destructing in epic proportions, bullying, murdering, suicide. What are we going to do about it? How can we change it? Well, I think a good place to start is our history. It is essential, first of all, that we turn back to our history every now and again to remind ourselves of the principles upon which this country was based, to read the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and the U.S. Constitution. It's essential that in making history, we don't forget to learn from our history. And if our children are to learn from our history, then we must teach it. Unfortunately, we've fallen seriously behind in the teaching of our history. Not only the history of the world, but the history in our own country. We cannot prepare any young person to meet the challenges and conditions of their world if we falsify the history that he or she is taught. And if we are truly considered to be the greatest country in the world, then shouldn't we be setting an example for the rest of the world and leading by that example? It is well past the time that each and every one of us take responsibility for changing the way our American history is taught. Because I can assure you, from what I see in schools, we are no longer fooling our kids. They want to know the truth. For decades, we have given our children history in a segmented way that easily leaves out the stories that we find uncomfortable to talk about or just too ashamed to remember them. We also don't mark the successes that we as Americans have made together. And they've been many, especially on the issues of culture and race. Take the civil rights movement, for example, the era of my own story. The civil rights movement wasn't about all one race against the other black folks against white folks and white folks against black, like I thought it was when I was in school because of the way history was taught to me. The movement was about everyone coming together and doing what was right and just. And people did that. People stood up and they chose sides. But today, as I visit schools across the country, I see that our kids are not aware of this rich history of ours. Why? Because history isn't being taught the way that it happened. In me, I believe that history is sacred and that none of us have the right to change or alter that history in any way. Our children need to know that white folks and black folks, men and women, young and old, rich and poor, they stood together. They marched together, they rode buses together, they were beaten together, in some cases, murdered and even buried together. All for what was just and right. Truly, they were going against the grain. Yes, it was a turbulent time in our country but it was also a very passionate time, a time of political and social change, times that we must never forget. And even though we might have a lot to be ashamed of about those times, we have so much to be proud of, proud of the fact that we came through it. We survived. 
and good prevailed. And whenever good prevails, we have much to be proud of, much to celebrate, and so much to share. So I say, let's remember it. Just in case, God forbid, we have to travel that same path again. We all know that history has a way of repeating itself. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't about our teachers. This isn't meant to discredit them in any way. It is about the circumstances that we've put them in particularly in public schools, where they do not have the same flexibility to teach outside of the box as teachers in private schools. They do not have the same flexibility to, for that matter, put new curriculum in the box to teach. American history is long overdue for a significant rewrite. I say, let's untie the hands of our educators. Let's go against the grain. Amazingly, again, we find ourselves with inadequate textbooks. We must demand a major overhaul of our history books. They should be replaced with textbooks that will allow us, allow our kids to celebrate everyone's history. Throughout the entire year, not just one month or one day. It is through the events of the past that our kids can learn how their history is actually connected to everyone else's history. Because it is our shared history. But you know, it's not just through textbooks that we can learn. Whenever and wherever we can, we, used to, we need to use this amazing and wonderful technology that our ancestors didn't have access to. To rewrite America's timeline and our stories. Let's use this universal language of the arts where we could tell our stories through music and dance, film and theater, paintings, and sculpture. Take, for instance, just this year, Brad Pitt, he used his talents to tell not just another story, but the truth of our past. And he won an Oscar for it. Long overdue, I would say. Through history, he actually made history. Isn't that amazing? Artists who are moved by the world's events, they can use their talents powerfully to convey feelings and ideas that could actually inspire us all. Another prime example, Norman Rockwell the problem we all live with, my story, the painted story as I like to refer to it. We need to tell these amazing stories and we need to tell them fully and truthfully this time so that we could cement a foundation of cooperation and unity rather than the divisiveness and competition that has gripped our country for far too long. We should tell the stories of everyone, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, Indian, Jewish, Muslim, every creed, every color. So that every child has an opportunity to grow up seeing themselves as Americans, as a part of the American dream. This year, 2014, marks the 50th, I'm sorry, the 60th. I'll be 60. <laughs> I wanted to stick with 50. 
60th anniversary of Brown versus the Board of Education, landmark decision to desegregate our schools. 60 years later, it's now time that we desegregate America's history. And yes, I've been told it's a grandiose plan, and it is. So was putting a man on the moon or sending a six-year-old child through angry mobs every day for a year just so that she could attend school. But it was called going against the grain. So first and foremost, what we must do is give our minds permission to accept that change, to welcome it rather than fear it. And then, like our ancestors before us, if we come together and we make that change, good will prevail. We have to remember what this nation was founded on equality and freedom, a nation that surely has made its share of mistakes, but a nation that has managed to make progress when we remain true to those principles upon which we were founded. We can do that. And that, my friends, is all of our shared story. And I assure you, it will make for great history if we remember to tell it exactly the way that it happened. I thank you and keep the faith. <laughs>